On World News Tonight this Tuesday, when will the Florida Supreme Court decide whatever it decides about the presidential election? What ballots will finally count? The ones with the dimpled chads? A colossal undertaking is on hold. The transition to a new administration is way behind schedule. What a way for winter to begin. 25 inches of snow in 24 hours. And is she or isn't she smiling, that is? Mona Lisa meets the computer. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening, everyone. In one sense, there is no news from Florida. At least there's no news from the state Supreme Court yet today, which may help to resolve the presidential election. There's a lot of news being made. The Gore and the Bush campaigns are at it still about the fairness of counting the vote. There are debates within debates about what is an honest ballot and an honest deadline. But the court, which will move this debate one way or another, is still considering its judgment. So we're going to go first to Tallahassee and ABC's Aaron Hayes. Aaron. Well, Peter, Republicans in a late move today filed a further argument with the Supreme Court saying the election should have been certified yesterday. They claim all the delay means Florida now runs the risk of seeing its votes not counted in the national electoral total. It was an unexpected salvo from Governor Bush's legal team. The Republicans' brief was delivered to the Supreme Court this afternoon. It addressed concerns justices raised in yesterday's hearing. That if the court agrees the state should wait to include all the hand recounted votes in the final total, that could jam up the timetable. What's the date, that the outside date that we're looking at in which puts Florida's votes in jeopardy? Justices are worried because even once Florida's votes are certified, there must be enough time left for the loser to contest the entire election if they wish. And any contest has to be resolved before the votes go to the Electoral College on December 12th. Do we know how long it's going to take to do these things? Are we just going to uh, reach up from some inspiration and, um, and put it down in paper? Republicans said today they know arguing it would take at the very minimum a 22 to 27 day period for contesting an election. So, counting backwards from December 12th, it said, means the certification of election should have been completed by November 20th, yesterday. Democrats quickly responded, not true, arguing the courts can speed along or expedite the consideration of any contest or challenge to the election because of these unusual circumstances. But Republicans think they have a strong argument, hope the court agrees. They want these votes certified as soon as possible so they can claim victory and move on. Thanks, Aaron. Aaron Hayes in Tallahassee. There is a genuine fear among Republicans that in the recounting process, the Democrats are trying, as Republicans put it, to steal the election. They do not want this counting by hand to continue because they do not always trust the counters. Whether it's a legitimate fear, it is real nonetheless. And as the hand counting continues, even though Mr. Bush is ahead by about 930 votes still, they dread a couple of things. We go now to Palm Beach and ABC's Jackie Judd. Jackie. Peter, tonight, Democrats and Republicans believe that if the state Supreme Court allows the hand counts to continue, Gore's best hope, perhaps his only hope of moving ahead of Bush, lies with the so-called dimpled chads. If a ballot card happens to drop on the floor, we have But the three predominantly Democratic counties are dealing with the dimpled or indented chads in very different ways. In Miami-Dade, the canvas board is including the dimpled chads in the vote count. In Broward County, the board is setting aside several hundred dimpled chads for now. In Palm Beach County, the board is rejecting them to the dissatisfaction of Democrats. The board has been consistent in their rulings and even handed in rulings, but we believe consistently wrong. Consider the numbers. Democrats estimate that in Palm Beach County alone, two-thirds of 800 dimple chads would have gone to Gore. The reason, some election experts say, is that many mistakes are made by traditional Democratic voters. Seniors, uh, first-time voters, inexperienced voters, and often African Americans are the ones who are most likely to, to overpunch or underpunch their ballots. Democrats are so concerned they went back to the Palm Beach County judge who had ordered the canvas board to at least consider the dimple chads as votes. The Democrats want a more precise ruling. 
We're asking them basically in a nutshell to count uh, every vote that uh, they can uh, determine the voter intent. We're looking for voter intent. Sometimes that's, you know, obviously that's sometimes hard to find. Republicans say the Democrats' latest legal move smacks of desperation. Democrats keep trying to move the goalpost in the middle of the game. They keep trying to change the rules when they don't like the way things are going. Democrats have known since election night that they may have to have the broadest interpretation possible of the ballots to win. They were hoping that local officials in all the key counties would come around to that way of thinking on their own. As of tonight, it's not working out that way. Peter? Thank you very much, Jackie Judd in Palm Beach. Republicans also fear what is happening in the counting of the absentee ballots, another example of a recounting quagmire. The Gore campaign has been embarrassed by accusations that so many absentee ballots possibly for Mr. Bush, were set aside. Here's ABC's Linda Douglas. Today, Republican lawyers went to county offices to re-inspect overseas absentee ballots that were thrown out because they did not have the legally required postmark. In an escalating public relations campaign, congressional Republicans charged again that Democrats plotted to disqualify those votes because they came from American troops who tend to favor Republicans. Floridians serving, it, serving in uniform who may live and work in dangerous locations around the world should not be disenfranchised because of circumstances requiring the del delivery of their ballots without a postmark. Republicans say it was morally wrong to throw out military ballots because the Postal Service failed to mark them properly. But county officials say most military ballots were disqualified for other reasons, lack of a legally required signature or witness. Democrats rushed out a war hero, Senator Bob Kerry, to say servicemen know their ballots must comply with the law. The right answer is that, that in the military, we accept responsibility for our mistakes. Uh, uh, we don't blame it on somebody else. Gore campaign officials say they did not even know which overseas ballots came from servicemen. Oh, we're talking about overseas ballots. No one knows which ballots are military or not. They're all overseas ballots together. But one county with a heavy military population did print military ballots differently, in red ink. Civilian ballots were printed in black. In Duval County, most of the 600 overseas ballots were from servicemen. And sources there say Democrats tried to challenge as many as possible. The Bush campaign has not ruled out suing to have military absentee ballots recounted. And the House Armed Services Committee has called for an investigation. Linda Douglas, ABC News, Washington. Just one other note from Tallahassee, perhaps having to do with state pride. The Florida Secretary of State, Catherine Harris, got a standing ovation in the legislature today from members of both parties. She was there for the swearing in of new legislators. Later in the broadcast, we'll take a closer look at delay and consequences for the presidential transition. Every day counts. Every day right now is equal to a week next year. And when we come back, we're going to take a closer look tonight at one of the ways in which this unresolved election is going to have a consequence. The Clinton administration said today it didn't think the delay would affect the presidential transition. But Washington remembers well how ill-prepared the Clintons were when they first came to the White House. The whole point of the transition is to have an efficient governing apparatus in place and ready to go. There are about 3,000 of the most important government jobs to fill, 600 of which have to be confirmed by the Senate. It is time-consuming at the very least. Here's ABC's John Martin. The government is ready. There are two floors of offices, 540 workstations, about $700,000 worth of rented space. We will give to the head of the transition for the president-elect this key. The General Services Administration has the tools, just not the names. You see a small gold chip on it, and that tells us who you are, and it tells us that you're authorized to go in, and it opens the door. But there's not a lot of time. The Clinton administration transition has begun already. Political appointees are leaving. Stephen Preston, general counsel to the Navy, for example, is going back to his old law firm and will have to be replaced, along with all the others. But it takes time. Time for the FBI to check newcomers' backgrounds. Time for the Senate to approve the most important 600 names so they can get to work in the top agency jobs. And if you don't have those filled, then you basically lose the connection. You decapitate the federal government. Every day counts. Every day right now is equal to a week next year. Good morning, everybody. Time is especially tight for the Bush team. Republicans have not held the White House for eight years, so they will be starting from scratch. Governor Bush will have empty offices everywhere. 
And he cannot, uh, an executive uh, cannot operate except through staff. And if he hasn't had his staff cleared on inauguration day, he is really crippled. Al Gore has the luxury of being able to ask some Clinton appointees to stay on, but he still has little time to waste. The senators are going to go through every nominee with a fine tooth comb. Robert Reich was on the 1992 Clinton transition team and wound up in the cabinet. Even without a close election, it took Bill Clinton six weeks to make his first appointments, and that can be a problem. The new president has got to get a State of the Union message ready and has got to prepare his first budget. Now, all of that has got to happen right away. So the clock is ticking, except here in the transition office, where it makes no sound. But everybody knows time is of the essence. John Martin, ABC News, Washington. The White House said today it is taking steps to make sure the transition proceeds as efficiently as possible.